Steve Vai, Jeff Beck, and Kirk Cobain have all had an impact on my playing, but one of them had had such an impact on my playing that he is responsible for me still playing guitar today because without him, I would have quit a long time ago. Now, before I tell you about that, we need to go back to the beginning. Wait, yep, yep, right there. 1994, I'm 15 years old. I just started playing guitar. And I started with a, a few friends and it was a really fun time at the time because we would all share our discoveries, we'd share pieces of songs, solos, scales. It was just a, a really cool group of people, friends, starting something together, discovering something together, sharing the joy of music, and that was awesome. And that continued for a few years. We actually ended up being in a band together, we progressed together, it was great. Flash forward a few years after, I'm 22 years old and I'm in music school. I just won a scholarship and that was great. I thought, man, I'm gonna leave my little town. I'm gonna go uh, to music school, learn about this thing I love so much and it's gonna be great. It's just gonna be like the beginning where we all share it together and we grow together and uh, no, not at all. That is very different because there was this guy called Jay. Now, Jay was about my age. We both liked the same styles of music but Jay was good, and Jay was fast. Not only that, but Jay had the looks. Jay was cool. <laughs> he had the long hair, he had the a denim jacket, and I mean, he had the whole package. He was the guitar hero, the type of guy that I looked up to when I was 15 years old and started to play. And uh, Jay was my age, and I didn't look like Jay, and I didn't play like Jay either, so. That was my first exposure to the terrible curse. Ah! See, I wanted to play like Jay. I actually wanted to play better than Jay. I wanted to beat Jay. I don't know how it happened because I was never really like that, but uh, yeah, <sighs> jealousy crept in. I just, I just wanted to be better than Jay. So I started working on the skills the scales, the technique, the speed, and all of that stuff. I, I was trying to figure out what Jay was doing, steal his licks, and play them better than him. Now just to be clear, there's nothing wrong with wanting to become better, wanting to take a piece and master it. That's totally fine. But what was wrong at the time, and I recognize it now, was uh, my heart. My heart wasn't into it, and I was trying to be better than him, not for, for reasons of self-expression, musical expression, but just because I was just jealous. Ah! It's really hard to admit, but I think we all have that. At least I know that I have a tendency to, to do that sometimes. And I really hate it. So that was me at the time, 22 years old. I never managed to beat Jay. And as a matter of fact, I left school lost touch with Jay, and just continue my, my own thing. But the seed had been planted. That, that seed of me trying to get better than someone uh, just kind of crept in in the years. And whenever I heard a guitar player that I really loved, I was trying to become that player in a way. And it happened with Steve Vai. I just really tried to learn the licks, to play the way he played, carry myself the way that he carried himself. And in the end, that brought a lot of disappointments because, well, I'm not Steve. But Steve's not me either. More on that later. And I did the same thing with uh, Jeff Beck. Now, Jeff Beck is not the, the flashy type of player necessarily. Very much Jeff, right? Jeff is who he is and he gets it. He's very a very personal way of musical expression. No one plays like Jeff. And unfortunately, I was trying to. <laughs> Again, I was trying to take his licks to play like him because I really liked what he was doing, not recognizing that really the reason I loved Jeff or Steve so much was that these guys were playing the way that they play. When you hear Steve, you know it's Steve. When you hear Jeff, you know it's Jeff because those players have no compromises. They're not trying to sound like anyone else but themselves. So that kind of was my approach to guitar playing. It was very subtle, but 
I started recognizing that in my playing where I would feel discouraged if I tried to play a certain lick and I wasn't able to, or I was trying to sound like a player and I wasn't able to. And it was just kind of discouraging to a point where I had no joy when I was playing because I kind of approached it like a competition. Now, the Guitar Hero game that came out a while back, something happened, I think, once that game came out, I've seen a generation of guitar players who approached guitar that way. A lot of my students had that kind of mentality. Uh, they got into electric guitar because of the Guitar Hero game, and they approached it like a video game. Uh, very technical driven, they were very, very good, but I started recognizing the signs of that curse that comparison curse that I had experienced throughout the years. And it crept in when they were saying things like, you're really good, I'll never be able to play like you. Or, man, I, I wish I played like you, but I just don't have it. I need to work more on that. And those things have always bothered me. They've bothered me deep inside because first, I recognized the discontentment that I had experienced. And also, because I think subconsciously I realized that you're right, you're never gonna be able to play like me because you're not me. But the sad part is that if you're trying to play like me, you're not really focusing on playing like you and that's really sad. Now I hadn't realized that until I had this job for this online company and one of my jobs was to transcribe a song and teach it on video. And one day I had this song from Nirvana in bloom. All right. Kurt Cobain, yeah, that's gonna be a breeze. That's gonna be really easy. He's not necessarily the technical guitar player, right? I, I like Nirvana, but I never really thought of Kirk as a guitar hero. But yeah, I learned the song and uh, then came the solo and I transcribed the solo and I transcribed it again because it wasn't quite there and I tried to play it. I, could, I, I just couldn't do it. I could not play Kirk's solo the way that he played it. I mean, I, I kind of figured out the notes, but there was something missing, and no matter how I taught it, it sounded nothing like the original recording. So the problem was that that solo was kind of all over the place. It worked with the song, but I can transcribe it in a, in a standard way. It wasn't really in tempo. There was a lot of intensity in the solo. Some notes were really wrong, it didn't make sense, yet it still worked with the song. And then I realized that, well, yeah, that, that solo is pure emotion. Kirk didn't care about playing perfectly. He cared about, about playing the way that he wanted to play at that particular time. Yeah, well, there were a few things that were, I'm sure he knew that he wanted to go there, but he didn't practice the solo, he just played it. And what we're hearing on the recording is his expression of that piece at the time in the recording studio or in their garage, wherever it was. I have no desire to, um, to um, become any better of a guitar player. I just don't, I'm, I'm not into musicianship at all. I don't, I don't have any respect for it. I just hate it, you know? to learn how to read music or to understand arpeggios and Dorian modes and all that stuff is just a waste of time. It's just, it just, you know, it gets in the way of originality. And then it just clicked with that song. Just listening to Kirk play made me realize that in the end, I can't play the way Kirk plays. And it's not because it's difficult, but it's because I'm not him. And that triggered a series of thoughts, of uh, deep thinking about music. And I just realized that uh, I had wasted years and years, and I was to the point of giving up music altogether because I was trying to reach something completely unreachable. I was trying to become someone that I wasn't. And then I started going deep within. And it was really fun. I rediscovered the joy of playing guitar. It was all exciting. It was like this new music that I didn't have to go far to, to hear. It was just all inside. I just had to listen to that inside. And that became my way of playing. And now when I hear students say, man, how, how can I play that way? I just tell them you can. There's even better that I can do. Click this video to discover how you can escape the curse and play the way you ought to play. I'll meet you right there.